Welcome to Orchestra 2.0. I'm happy to announce the new release of Orchestra. Um, in this version, we're going to see a bunch of updates. First, foremost, we have a completely new UI, which instead of putting itself on top of the video, stacks on the sides and makes room for the video inside the screen. Um, you will see the tracks coming to the left here. To add a track, you have the button in the bottom. The, the mods, they come under the fader. So you have the fader in the top, you have the mods in the bottom. Um, each track now can have a name. So you can name the track. You name it by double clicking its title here. You can then see in the bottom part, we have a new UI as well. So the track section is a little cleaned up. There are less UI elements here and the ones that are more effectively in, in, in the view. Um, so you have the blend mode. Here you have the UI color uh, for the for the fader over here. And you have the to move to move the track. You have the arrows over here. Moving on then we have a chain overview. And the chain overview is uh, where you will see all the chains that are connected to the track in a better overview. And here we have three dots if you want to save a chain, duplicate it or delete it. You can also drag and drop to rearrange. There is also a autoplay section here. I will go into that a little bit later. Moving on to the video effects on the layers, we have a, a more clear UI on when which one is focused, the color, the delete button is gone on Mac OS 14 and upward. Uh, you delete with the, with the backspace key. You can now double click to minimize. The blend modes have been moved to the bottom of the card. You have them here. You have the mixer here. You can also map the mix, of course. And we also have uh, the locked effects go to the right of the add button. They're put in gray color. And we have a new add view. So over here, you have shaders, pixels, giphy and everything placed on a window. You can move it around. It's opened with also a keyboard shortcut. And this is also a new feature in Orchestra 2. It's, it's very keyboard driven. So you can see the shortcut spelled out here, Command K. When you're in the view, you can just toggle like here. You see Command 1, 2, 3, 4. You go between the different types of um, styles that you want to add. If you want to add a shader, you can switch between layer and effect, whatever you want to add. Command F always goes to the search. You can search for kaleidoscope, press down, press enter, and you have it added deleted with backspace. So that's that's that. You also have uh, on the parameters, go into this one, for example, you want to map this, whatever, to uh, LFO. You can see that all the mod sources now have shortcuts. So you just control L goes to the LFO. We have um, for the speed, we have a bunch of different shortcuts. So it's basically com control shift plus uh, number one up to nine for the slower versions, Q, W, E for the faster variants. So that's that. You also have the um, uh, possibility now to double click parameter to reset it. Then we have autoplay. Autoplay basically moves based on some condition to the next item in the chain chain list. So for example, if you click here, you have 
fader as an option. Fader basically shifts to the next chaining cube when the fader hits the bottom. So then it goes to the next one. Like that. Super useful if you just want to play around with a lot of different effects and have some variation go along without you having to shift it by pressing a button or whatever. It's a very playful way to go around with, with, with different effects. You shift it uh, on time basis, which is good if you want to leave the projections for some time and go to the bar and talk with some people. Yeah. Right, so then next up we have, as you've already seen, there's text support. So you can just add text like that, have a bunch of different font options. Uh, you can run through that, you can search for whatever and uh, it's super simple to use it's very it's it's yeah very rudimentary but it does the job this one goes through a 3d displacement otherwise it would just be a solid text i've added a bunch of 3d effects to to this version as well you find them under add and right now i think they're in the bottom there's the 3D displacement, there are some layers that have much more 3D kind of effect. All right, next up we have masks. And masks you'll find in the bottom of the selected video effect or layer. You can add a mask on any layer or effect. And it's super useful when you do mapping. So clicking it will show you this screen, like an overlay and you can just draw on top of your layer or effect to add the mask. It's very simple and fun to play around with. You can do some super basic simple operations like resizing, moving, etc. You can also invert the whole mask like that. You press done when you're done. And um, simple like that. To remove it you can just clear and then it's gone if you have a mask added to your effect you'll see that it lights up with the active color all right next up we have something that's also super useful it's now possible to load and save whole chains so i have a bunch of different chains here just different ones that I've been playing around with um, and it's just you just add it like that and then you have the whole chain like this it's very useful then we have some MIDI improvements it's been widely requested like how do you map how do you use MIDI basically um, the kind of core concept in orchestra is that you don't want to map specific parameters to MIDI because you might come with a different controller, you might in the future be able to share your chains or projects even. And if you have a bunch of MIDI mappings, they would I would they would add either have to be strip, stripped away or just not working in the uh, within with another hardware controller or whatever. So orchestra kind of puts a little orchestra puts kind of like a proxy in between, which is the the mod sources. So mod sources are the mod one, two, and three, which these are connected to the track. So if we would want to modulate the depth of this one with MIDI, we would map it to mod 
one, two, or three, like this. And then I would have set up the mod. Now I'm moving my MIDI controller. I arrange the size. And that is the mapping that you set up in the MIDI settings. Right now I have Launch Control XL connected. The mod one and two for track one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to eight. And it counts from the start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. Um, these ones you can, what I usually do is I just press play and then I, then I just go from the start in the row turn each one a little bit like that and this way it's they're all set up um, I've done some I, I, I haven't mapped the last part here because I'm running that for I'm not running that as a, as a track it's my master effect and I use the fader to control the speed of the whole project and I have the mod sources connected to the first one to the color and the other ones are connected to global effects. So let's look at global effects or actually the first one it's mod mod one it's connected to the master effect here so it's connected to the track. But we have a new feature uh, on Orchestra 2, which is global mod sources. So before you were kind of limited to having, if you wanted to control, say, um, two effects in two different tracks with the same knob, or you wanted to modify an effect in a track that you didn't have any mod sources mapped to, whatever. Like there are multiple different use cases for global uh, global mods. And in my case, I want to have a track which is always running. So this is the film filter, the master effect. I have a bunch of effects here. I usually use a, a film filter on it where I can kind of adjust the gamma for and the exposure for the whole scene. And I have some uh, contrast settings, vignette, vibrance. This is something that I run on the whole set most of the times. Uh, but then I connected these things to global, the global mod sources. The global mod sources go in the top. You don't see any, any if you don't have uh, if you don't have any global sources uh, connected. So, for example, I have. For example, I have the strobe. Here's one strobe, it's connected to global three. The, glo the globals, they can be renamed. So you just double click it. Otherwise, this one is called global three, like that. It's just this initial name when you first connect it. So moving this one up will adjust this source. So you could add multiple effects to this global mod source and then I have connected that to the top row on my launch controller. And this one is running with LFO so I can kind of increase it where with my with the VPM speed. Super useful. Then you have the global the global smoothing for MIDI. It's also a new feature which makes your MIDI controller, the movement of the MIDI controller, the hardware movement is maybe not so steppy and it smooths, it smooths it out so you can adjust it to your liking. Another new feature is the chain overview. It's kind of messy, but it's there. This is going to be this is going to be um, improved in the future. It's mainly used when you run without the main renderer. 
and you just want to use this screen estate for something else but you can also toggle it when you just want to have a bigger overview of all the chains so the possibility to go into some more render sizes and there's the possibility for different fps you can go 60 fps now even 120 it's up to your computer basically I usually run 60, usually run 1280, 1440. I run a little less now because I also record the screen and don't want to kill my computer. Then there is the final, some final adjustments on the audio, but I will show that on a different project. Okay, so the last thing I want to show, <laughs> the last thing I want to show you is uh, audio reactivity. It's uh, been, it's been updated and works a lot better now basically oh basically you uh, can you can now for the filters you have settings in milliseconds and there is now the the kind of adjust, auto adjustment is much better follows the sound source in a cleaner way so let's try it out with just some beatboxing You see that my bass is coming over here. So let's try with a. So let's try it with some beatboxing. Yeah. So basically. Um, you have the auto adjust, auto just moves the uh, bigger section here to the <clears throat> to the input signal. If you have no auto adjust, it's just gonna stay still like that. It's maybe good if you know that you have a signal that's gonna be um, always hitting a certain threshold. I usually keep it somewhere maybe like 10, 10% or something. Uh, it's gonna be slowly moving towards the signal. When the signal hits, it's gonna move it up a little bit. And I'm gonna increase the gain here. So for the track now, for the movement of this one, I'm moving basically the pitch or the pitch. I'm moving the, the rotation of the cube here with an LFO. <clears throat> the source is set to audio low. Basically means that whenever it gets a signal, it pushes the LFO forward. And this can be like in a side wave it could be uh, could be uh, random. It could be, yeah, basically anything. And there's I also put highs to the scale, so and that's what I did with the with the invert as well. Oh, I didn't show it like that. So that's really good. It works maybe even better with real audio, but uh, just wanted to show you. All right, that's everything. Thank you.